Ooh, this is weird. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's like matrix booming. Um, anyway, happy Monday. It's TGIM. We are at the start of a brand new week. Um, hopefully you made the most of our one day of summer for the year yesterday. I managed to get out and um, relax in the sun with some friends, so that was fun. Um, and now we're back to rain. Yay. But that's good because do you know what? That's good for our gardens and I just read the other day that we're on the water restriction now so surely um, having more rain is good for our water supply or whatever, however well that works. Anyway, a um, couple of things. So I'm um, really wrapped that some of you re reached out to me last week on the, um, on the heels of the last video so we've got some people re... Uh, reinvigorated, restarted and back on track so that's really cool um, so if you need some help with that then feel free totally to get in touch with me and um, for those of you that are currently working on your journey hopefully you've had a chance to do your um, goals for the week uh, and filled in your client workbook and shared that with me um, if you haven't done that yet then, then definitely get it done today um, because today is all about or even Sunday is actually a, a better day to do it is setting up our goals for the week so um, on your health and wellness journey it's one around mindset one around um, exercise and one around nutrition it can be the same one as last week if you're wanting to carry on um, and just really get that habit ingrained uh, I was listening to something in the Body Transformation Challenge the other day. Now, they say 21 days to form a habit, but um, they actually, or some people are now saying really it's 66, so you have like 22 days to start that habit, 22 days for it to be a little bit messy, and then the last 22 days is when it's really getting ingrained. So habits are really about changing your neural pathways. So... Um, because you'll know that we start to do things and without even actually thinking about it because those messages in our neural pathways have been so deeply entrenched. So to form a new habit and to break an old habit, you need to really weaken that one. So do that one less and less and less, the one that you want to extinguish. And the new habit that you want to form, you have to keep doing. Now it's hard to start with. You know, and oftentimes people give up. But why would you? When you know that you repeat that behavior over and over and over, then your new neural pathways are going to get deeply entrenched and it's just going to become habit. And so that's how we create a new, healthy, active lifestyle by stopping the old habits. And it's not going to be easy to start with, but you do them less and less to weaken those habits and the neural pathways. And you do the new habits more and more and more. Um, I kind of went off on a tangent that just sort of like wasn't on my list of things to talk about today. But that's essentially it in a nutshell. We want to create new healthy habits and we need to keep doing them so they get stronger and stronger and they just become second nature to us. It's like driving a car. You know, when you first started to learn to drive a car, you had to really focus on it. But now we can get from like, you know, one end of the motorway to the other and then go... How did I get here? We've all been there. Come on. All right. So that was one. You know, that was a bonus. That was a bonus tip around habits and creating those habit healthy habits. Um, I've been listening to a bit of stuff over the weekend. So, especially around sort of um happiness. Now, people seem to think happiness is a destination. So when this happens, then I'll be happy. When something else or once I've achieved this, then I'll be happy. But we actually need to be able to be happy without those things. Um, because otherwise we'll never be satisfied. So learning how to be happy is, um, is key. And looking for the good in everything. Um, that takes effort, that takes that takes forming it as a habit. Um, but one way of doing that is by having a gratitude journal. Now what that does is it starts making you think about the things that you're grateful for. So you start to notice them more. There's a phenomenon called confirmation bias. Um, which is basically, if you think it, your brain will look for 
evidence to prove that you're right. Now that it doesn't care, your brain doesn't care whether it's a negative thing or a positive thing. If you think it and you believe it, then your brain is always going to look for things that confirm what you're thinking. So that's why we're so strong on, you know, being kind about yourself and, you know, really saying cool things about yourself because then you will find evidence to confirm that. Now, back to habits, it's a habit to create. It's like, what is it like? Could it be like brainwashing yourself? Kind of, but do you know what? I'd rather be focusing on the good stuff that happens and looking for the opportunities than focusing on the negative because that's not really a very nice place to be. Um, so, And I used to be there. I used to play the victim. So definitely it is something that can be changed should you choose to do that. Um, the other thing I wanted to say about happiness is obviously, you know, you want to uh, start focusing on the things that make you happy or that practicing gratitude. But it's nobody else's responsibility to make you happy. So just think about that. Because a lot of times we we apply our happiness to external things or external people. And it's actually nobody else's job to make us happy. We have to be happy within ourselves. How you do that is up to you. <laughs> You know, there's lots of stuff that you can listen to, you can surround yourself with people, um, lots of different options. Uh, but that's basically it. So if you've still to send me your um, goals for the week, then please do so. Or you're more than welcome to comment below in, below this video um, and, and make it public and share it. Um, yeah, so we are focusing on activity goals, not your result goal, okay? So you've set your result goals, and I'll see that once you've, you know, obviously we've we've already had a chat, but I will see that when you send through your client workbook to me. Um, but now we're focusing on activity goals, so what do we need to do to move towards our ultimate result goal? Um, it could be drinking more water, it could be consuming less food, so dropping those portion sizes. It could be making sure you're going for a walk or doing um, X amount of strength workouts during the week. Um, it could be listening or reading something that is going to uplift you. Um, if anyone's got any suggestions of things that they, books or audios that they found helpful, then feel free to comment below there as well. Uh, so that's sending your goals or commenting below with those goals. Second thing is about creating new habits, weakening the neural pathways of the habits that you want to get rid of and strengthening those ones. The third one was maybe starting a gratitude journal. That might be your mindset goal for the week. Um, and then the fourth was happiness is our responsibility as nobody else's. So with that, I hope you guys have a lovely week. Feel free to reach out if you need some help or you want to have a call to set your goals and get back on track. Um, or if you just need to have a sounding board, that's cool too. Because, um, and you could, you know, you could do a comment in the group or a post in the group asking for suggestions or solutions to something you're struggling with feel free to do that, that's totally cool, or you can send it to me, send me a message. Um, tomorrow, I think, or Wednesday, I'm going to be talking about um, Formula One, Nutrition Shake, and the Multi, and why those are so good to have in your day. Alright, have a lovely Monday, and a lovely week, and I will see you guys later.